everybody, it is Tuesday the 24th of October. Um, I thought today I would take you for a little walk the other way from where I live. So I live just down there and to the right hand side. Um, I'm just walking through into Vintner Road, which is this rather nice little uh, residential area and just walk through here, it's a pedestrian footpath out onto the main road at Vineyard. And so this area is just to the north of the town centre, um, before the two roads split off, one to the Oxford Road and one out to Radley in the kind of east, northeast of Abingdon. And the Radley Road is also where Old Abingdon was based at the little village farmstead, really, of Barton. And from there, Abingdon has grown and the Abbey has moved, has been a large part of that development. And the name of Abingdon, I've not talked about its origins. Um, there is a church in St Aldate's, which is the main road coming south out of Oxford. Uh, St Aldate is not actually a saint. The, sorry, there's a lorry just going past. The, um, the street was named St Aldate's, but it's believed to be the old gate, which has been changed over time and it just expected that something called Aldate it was probably a saint so it's had the name St Aldate and St Aldate crosses the river at Folly Bridge and then comes down the Abingdon Road as the A34 and then into the Oxford Road into the centre of Abingdon and about halfway between well probably two thirds of the way between here and Oxford is a little village called Boar's Hill and it's believed that Boar's Hill was the original site of the village, the, the settlement of Abingdon. And I was saying that in St Aldate's there is a church, and that church is St Ebbs, E-B-B-E-S. And it's believed that that St Ebbs and this Abingdon are both named after a, uh, ang an Anglo-Saxon abbess of a place on, in the borders of Scotland now, which would previously have been in the Kingdom of Northumberland. And they're believed to be the only two places in England, in the, the southern part of England, where the cult of this medieval abbess, early medieval, late Saxon abbess, is actually venerated. So, originally Abingdon started at Boar's Hill, but gradually moved down towards the riverside here with the establishment of the Abbey in the Norman period the late Saxon Norman period. And there's another part of Abingdon which I find fascinating. So I'm now walking down the vineyard and there's some very nice buildings behind me, quite old buildings, mostly Georgian, or maybe 17th century, but mostly 18th century. Um, just coming up across the road, there is another set of almshouses, the St. John's Arms Houses, as you can see there, which again, rather fine, um, late Georgian early Regency building, so built about 1801. And I used to catch the bus from across the road to go to work. And I would see the road sign of the street that runs alongside where I caught the bus. I'll just cross the road, make sure I don't get run down in the process. There we are. Um, and there's a street sign next to where I caught the bus, and it's always intrigued me. So I'm just, as you can see, rather nice buildings that face onto the front here. And the, the modern buildings have been made to blend in as quite well with, with, the, with the more venerable buildings. So this is all new and I'm just coming up to Petrol Station and then I'll be at the side road that I want to talk about. And it's, it's often, I've, I've often pondered this road sign 
And as I was making these videos, I thought, well, this is a good opportunity to perhaps explore whether it is what I think it is. And it turns out that it is. So I'm just going to cross this little side road now. Just make sure I don't get run down by anything. No, there's nothing coming. So th the name of this side road, I hope you can see there, is The Mott. Now, that's quite significant because anybody who knows anything about Norman castles, everybody, when you mention a Norman castle, immediately thinks of the huge stone monuments that were built by the later Normans and the early Plantagenets. So, um, very much at the same time as they were building stone churches to replace the wooden churches that the Saxons would have had. But the earliest castles that the Normans built and these, these castles are spread across the whole of the continent of Western Europe, were what was known as a Mott and Bailey castle. Now, in this context, a Mott, the Mott part of a Mott and Bailey castle, is a huge mound on top of which is built the stone keep. And actually, archaeological digs of such Motts in various locations throughout Europe has actually discovered that probably two, possibly three stories of the keep were actually below the ground level. So the, build, the keep was built and then the mot was, the earth was piled up around the lower floors as a defensive structure. And then around the mot, there was built uh, a defensive wall, a palisade with ditches and banks and this would be the bailey. And so the normal kind of services, the kitchens, the great hall, the stables, would be in the bailey part of the Motton Bailey Castle. And then in a time of uh, tension or anxiety, the family and their entourage would move into the castle, the keep proper. Now, I just want to make sure I'm going the right way, so I, I will just, if you'd bear with me a second, I'll just make sure I'm on the right path. Yes, I think I'm actually going the right way, so I'm just going to walk around here. Then this is uh, just normal housing in the town centre. Um, but the, so the mot there is one of the historical kind of um, leftovers from the Mott and Bailey Castle. But I'm also walking in an area where the road is named Fitzharry's. Now, there is a high school just along the road next door to my primary school, where I'm a governor, in fact, which is Fitzharry's. And there are a number of uh, streets and pubs in the area named after the Fitzharry's. And it's always spelt with a Y, so it's Fitzharry S. But in fact, there was a medieval family who lived in this area of Abingdon. There was a manor house here, and they were the Fitzharris family, with an I. Although, of course, medieval spellings are never completely safe. So, Fitzharris tells me that the family was um, Norman in origin, and just reading the little plaque there. So the family was Norman in origin, and anybody with the surname Fitz something is a scion of a bastard line of the family, usually a bastard son, in fact, always a bastard son. So they would be a son not, not born to the wife of, the, of the, the man involved, but whom he recognized as his son. And so they weren't entitled to inherit the title of the father, but the father could leave them land and very often um, junior titles. And probably the most common uh, familiar names are names like Fitzwilliam, uh, Fitzalan, Fitzherbert, and also Fitzroy. And Fitzroy comes from the French fils Roi, which means son of the king. The Fitz part of all of these names is the anglicization of the French fils, which is the son. 
So Fitzroy is at, at some point descended as a bastard from one of the monarchs. And so the Fitzharrys were the illegitimate line of a retainer of the, the conqueror um, who came over at the conquest in 1066 from Normandy named Harry and or Harris and their uh, ancestral lands are actually based up in uh, Cheshire uh, which is where they originally settled but part of the family through marriage ended up living in a manor house which was here in Abingdon on this site and I think you can just see if I if I pan around you may just be able to see that the ground isn't entirely flat and in fact it's probably more pronounced if I walk on the other side of this lovely huge tree in the centre of this little green area that this is probably the site of the original Mott. It was certainly known to be a manor house in the 15th century belonging to Abingdon Abbey and the belief is given the the place names given the likelihood that this is actually uh, the of the location this is actually the original Abingdon Castle location so a little bit of digging around and I think there's a degree of certainty now that there would have been a Mott and Bailey castle on here there is a Mott and Bailey in central Oxford as well um, at the bottom of New Road, which is not very new. And the, um, the mound is itself a scheduled monument and is huge. I mean, it's, it's, it's very high. This has obviously <coughs> been levelled over the years in order to build the, the manor house that would have been here. Um, and so most of the, the superficial on the surface evidence of this being a mot has been lost but has been retained in the street names of this particular area. So I thought rather than go back to the main road, there's a little nature walk, which was the wrong path I nearly took earlier, which is taking me in more or less the right direction. And I just thought it would be nice to have a walk through here because I, I didn't know this place existed until I started sniffing around for the castle. <laughs> um, and there are some lovely little paths leading off through the trees. So it's really quite an attractive little place. Um, I'm surprised I never knew it was here, but then I never really investigated this side of the town centre. Um, where I live now, I've talked about in the past as being a, an area of countryside. Um, in fact, Vineyard is named after the farm that was uh, more or less where my home is now. Uh, those would have been farmlands right outside the town centre to the north. And this would have been at a time, well, if we think about it, um, I'm just walking up towards um, Box Hill Road because there is standing there something I want to show you, which is the one remaining element of the Abingdon Poor House. And the Poor House that's up here was actually built in the 1870s and was hexagonal in shape. Um, or, or octagonal, I think hexagonal, I think it was six-sided. Um, and it replaced earlier poor houses that had been in the centre of town in what is now Queen Street that joins the marketplace to Broad Street, which is the main road, former main road that used to go right through the centre of the town. Um, and, and come out at Bath Street and then go up towards Wotton and, and uh, Cumnor and the like. So I've shown you that the arm houses at St Helens and the arm house that's in um, Vineyard and there are a few more arms houses along Ox Street and all of these arms houses are actually still used as arms houses to this day but the poor laws when they were introduced were designed to prevent poverty creating idleness and there was a there was a belief in the idea of the feckless poor the poor who couldn't be bothered to work rather than the poor that simply had no work and so the poor houses legislation was designed to um, instill the idea that you you would be supported 
but it would be at a cost and it meant that families would be split up because men and women were not allowed to be in the same part of the poorhouse and, and if they had children then the children would go with the mother until they were a certain age if they were boys and then they would go with the father so it was a real last resort that people would throw themselves on the mercy of the poorhouse and the Oxford poorhouse lasted all the way through until 1932 when it was finally demolished sorry the Abingdon poorhouse but in fact the Abingdon poorhouse was the first in the country to be built according to the new legislation that was passed by Parliament in the 19th century and initially encompassed the parishes within 14 parishes within the immediate vicinity of Abingdon but then eventually a few years later uh, grew in size to incorporate um, up to 38 parish, um, the poor of 38 parishes within the local area. Um, I'm just wandering through this nice little play park and parkland on Box Hill Road. I think it's Box Hill Road it's called because as I say at the far end of this uh, playing field is a small remnant the only remnant now of the Abingdon poorhouse. So it will be along here a little way. I may edit some of this out in order to avoid uh, the, the rather exciting prospect of me wandering through a field talking to a camera. Uh, I can't see where the house, the, whole, the wall is. Um, ah. Here we are, we're coming up to it now. So this wall here in this, at the end of this play park, I don't suppose most people have even given it a second thought, but this is all that remains of the Abingdon Poor House. Um, there would be uh, exercise yards. It, I'm talking about it as if it were a prison. It wasn't a prison. You were free to go, but you received no support if you did leave. Um, and most of the day would be taken up with mindless work, very much like forced labour uh, in a hard labour in a prison would be. But sometimes it would be fulfilling work, and sewing and, and um, similar activities for the women in particular. But the Victorians recognised the need for people to have fresh air as part of their daily regimen and so um, an area where they could go outside and take fresh air rather than be cooped up in buildings all the time was an essential part of the design of the workhouse and although we have very fixed ideas about the rights and wrongs of treating the poor as if they were somehow criminal because they were poor in many ways the poor laws were were the tiny baby steps that every society has to take in order to develop a more compassionate and understanding of the systemic causes of poverty uh, as much as there will always be as uh, unfortunately those people who want to take advantage of any system of compassion. Um, as you can see this is quite a nice playing field marked out as a football pitch, uh, that would be a soccer pitch for those of you who are watching from over the pond. Um, and there are a basketball court further down and swings and slides and so on. So I will just walk around. As you can see, this wall actually extends all the way along this stretch of the playing field. And the houses on the other side are known locally or were known locally when they were first erected as the workhouse estate and there's a there is still some evidence of the old workhouse in within that estate which I will go around and show you now so I'm back on the Oxford Road now walking back down towards the vineyard and you'll notice that there's a road here on this side as well as the main road over there having looked at some um, later medieval early modern maps it's quite clear that this was once the route of the main road out of Abingdon and that as the town has grown in size and as transport links have improved the road has actually moved slightly 
in that direction in order to be made wider. But this, this road actually preser preserves the old road out of Abingdon. So I've come down to the Oxford Road and I have promised you the evidence that of the actual workhouse itself. Um, this road that I'm standing on, which comes off the Oxford Road, uh, which is the main road there, and this, this road here is Abbott's Road. And Abbott Road, uh, along with Thessinger Road, which is the road that comes off Abbott Road, just to the side, around this corner as I'm going, um, were both, both names were picked by uh, public choice in the 1930s, after the poorhouse was demolished and the, work, the workhouse estate was built. And both of the men were um, former Abingdonians, as it were, uh, who had gone on to greater things in their lives. And so this was the town's way of preserving their memory. Um, now, I'm just going to walk to, to Thessida Road, which is just ahead on the left. And once I get there, I'll explain the remnants that are found here of the old workhouse. Now, in fact, when the workhouse was closed in 1932, it was totally demolished. Every last brick was removed. But the road here from Abbott Road into Thessiger Road, which is the side road, the name of the side road, I think, as you can see, possibly on that sign. This junction here is not it's not a 90 degree turn. Uh, it's difficult for me to show you. I'll see if I can turn the camera around and give you a better idea. So this is Thessiger Road. And as I look straight up Thessiger Road, you can see that it actually comes to Abbott Road on a, at an obtuse angle. This, this angle here is an obtuse angle. It's greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180. And it is believed by the um, people who understand the way these things work that this road here, this kerb along here, is actually marking the edge of the, where the workhouse building was. And so the road layout itself preserves for posterity the fact that this area, 100 years ago, uh, 200 years ago rather, sorry, but 100 years before it was turned, pulled down, was the site of the Abingdon workhouse. And you'll see across the road is the parish church of Our Lady in St Edmund. Uh, you're not quite catching the steeple, the, not quite steeple, but tower, the bell tower, pinnacle, just behind that tree. And um, in a future episode, I will be talking about the foundation of this church, but it's only about 150 years old, and um, it was endowed by the Earl of Abingdon, um, the, the last Earl of Abingdon, in fact, and he left it a sum of money to maintain the parish at the end of the 19th century, and, and it's part of the Diocese of Portsmouth now. Um, so, as I say, I will do a little bit more detail about the parish church, but in the grounds of the parish church is the old convent of Our Ladies as well. And this was here at the same time as the workhouse on the other side of the road was being built. Um, so they're, they're more or less contemporaneous buildings, but this now is the only one that survives. So I hope you've enjoyed this little um, bits and pieces tour of vineyard area and um, I look forward to speaking to you all again tomorrow so for now goodbye Glad